We'll just give everybody a few minutes to arrive. We still see some people coming in. So just a, just another minute and then we'll get started. Okay, looks like we are about ready. Just as uh, I know we spoke a couple of weeks ago, but I'm Joe Gilderson. I'm with Corporate Audiovisual. My colleague Ryan Finch is right here, with, also with Corporate Audiovisual. And uh, obviously, we're representing the Business Council of Westchester's team in how we're going to proceed with our first ever virtual expo. You know, so we're all pretty excited. The, the virtual trade show is certainly a new experience for all, and we understand that. And that's why we thought it would make sense to hold another, another little webinar just to go through some of the key things. Um, I, I, hopefully by now, everybody has seen an email come through, all right? Because that's really where, where everyone's gonna start. There's a link that had you set up your booth. Now, Amanda and the team at BCW and ourselves have gone through, everybody's booth is already set up. So we're gonna kind of start from that point. And we're gonna bring, Ryan's gonna share his screen. And then we're actually gonna go step-by-step step through the actual booth. And then we'll get into some other parts of the, of the expo itself. But we want everybody to feel comfortable with setting up their booth. So on that point, Ryan, why don't we uh, bring up the screen and let's get started. Okay. All right, so here we go. Uh, if everyone, uh, or if, if some of you were on our last webinar, you, you might've seen some of this. We, we kind of uh, quickly uh, went through some of the you know, preliminary controls. Um, I'm just gonna get this out of the way, here we go. So to Joe's point, we're hoping at this point, everyone has received an email that looks something like this to go and, and actually set up your booth. So um, assuming you have, I'm gonna click on this and, um, and that's gonna take me to, again, where I can start to edit uh, you know, the, the actual contents of my booth. So in, uh, up at the top here, the vendor name, obviously some of this is, is gonna be pretty straightforward. Most of it should be uh, already started for you, um, but you, you're free to edit any of this as needed. Uh, booth size obviously is, is already kind of predetermined. And then one of the, you know, questions was to, um, you know, talk about how to get the, uh, the correct resolution graphic uploaded to the, uh, to the page. So if you hover right over this here, uh, live preview desktop, you'll see a little I button 
And that little pop up, I know it's kind of hard to read here, but you can see uh, it's 2000 by 500 pixels. And so once you're inside this portal, depending on the booth size you have, all you have to do is go and hover over this and it'll show you exactly what size is recommended for this graphic here. And then to add it in, I'm simply gonna click right on the space for it. And uh, after a little pinwheel action here, I'll get a little pop-up and that's where I can select the image and upload it. And, uh, and then that will appear right here. And then the same goes for the logo. Again, hovering over the eye, it's also telling me, okay, 1080 by 1080 for the logo. And same thing, I just click on this little button here and I can pick what I'd like and populate that as needed. Now, um, I don't know if this is helpful to shout out, but the, the different sizes of the booths, uh, the large booth is, is 2000 by 500. Um, the medium booth is 1500 pixels by 750 and the small is 1500 by 1000. Uh, again, I know that's kind of quick numbers to, to try and jot down right now. Hopefully, I, I think we are recording this as well. But, but again, this information is going to be right here inside of your booth. And so uh, you'll always be able to refer to it there. And, you know, Ryan, just to simplify things for everyone, the event sponsors and the event partners are listed as the large size and all of the standard exhibit booths are gonna be as the medium size. So you guys don't have to worry about the small and some of the other things. There's really only two sizes at this point. Great. Okay, so again, um, you know, feel free to customize all of this as needed. Uh, we have an about section where you get a chance to, you know, say what, uh, what your group is about. So, um, you know, again, all of this is customizable. Uh, I, I mentioned this on the last one, tags. Don't worry too much about that right now. It, it's helpful in certain ways, but not in ways that we're going to need them. So um, I, I'd say you, you could just breeze past that for now. And then we get to what is really the most important part. And this is something I'll spend a little bit more time on this time around versus uh, you know our, our last conversations. Um, right here in this dropdown where the content provider uh, you have the options in terms of what you want your audience to see when they enter your booth. And so you'll see, obviously, in, in you know, what's in front of you here is YouTube, Vimeo, uh, a site called Wistia, uh, a session, and Google Slides. And so really quickly, I'm just going to go through uh, those different options uh, so that you can, you know, again, start to customize the booth and, and what that audience is going to see when they get there. So um, we'll start with YouTube since YouTube seems to be, uh, you know, the most widely uh, understood. So I select YouTube and then it's going to ask me for a video ID. Uh, I can always just copy the URL. So don't worry about what the ID is versus the link uh, versus the URL. Go to your video, right? And just how you'd share this to someone. Hey, take, take a look at this video. I'd either hit share and copy, or maybe I come up here copy this link. In this case, I'm, I'm just going to hit share and I'm going to copy this link and I'm going to go back to my portal. Here we are. And I'm going to paste this in and then I'm going to hit save. And it is quite literally as simple as that. And then you are good to go as far as having a YouTube video. Now, once you save, it's going to back you out again. This is more of my hop in portal. You'll notice that I am also managing our corporate AV booth for the actual uh, uh, Wexpo itself. So um, any other booths that you might have or are going to be here or that you might be a, a, a vendor of will be here. But in all likelihood, you're just going to have one. And if you'd like to go back and edit it, you can do so with this button here. And that'll bring you back in. And we can move on to, say, Vimeo. Uh, again, these are just you know similar platforms between YouTube, Vimeo, and Wista. Uh, you just, you're going to the, to the, the actual clip itself, each platform slightly different, whatever one you're more familiar with is fine. But in this case, I'm going to copy the video link from Vimeo. I'm going to go back to my portal. I'm going to paste that in and I'm going to hit save. And so again, rinse and repeat. It, it's very similar for all of these different platforms. Uh, in this case, uh, I have to open up this video. I'm not as familiar with Wist yet, but it looks like that might be what I'm looking for. This is a little bit more complex. All right, there we go. Copy the link and I go back to Hopin and I scroll down and I'm going to select Wistia and I'm going to paste the link. 
again, so, so on and so forth. Uh, the only one that's a little bit different before I get to session, I'm going to save session for last, but the only one that's a little bit different is Google Slides. Uh, I know some people are familiar with Google Slides. There's uh, a slightly different way to go about putting Google Slides in here. And I'm going to demo that in just a second. But if I have, say, a slide show that I put together in Google Slides, the way I get this in here is I first go up to File, hit File, and then I drop down and I'm looking for Publish to the Web. And once I hit that, I get this window that pops up. And don't worry too much about what's here. The key is obviously this link. I'm going to go ahead and, and check these two boxes uh, to start the slideshow as soon as the player loads, to restart the slideshow after the last slide. There's some things on the hop inside you'll need to do as well, but, but just start here. Just check these two boxes and copy this link. And I'm going to close this out. I go back to hop in and here it is. And so then I hit save. And so this is the one that uh, I suppose I'll actually show the front end to. So um, don't worry about how I navigate. Navigation is something we're going to come back to in just a second. But just so you can get a sense of what this looks like on the day of. So I've just entered in. I go to the Expo tab again on the left-hand side. We'll go over navigation in just a second. But uh, for right now, let's just get to my booth here. So there you go. There is the Google Slides. It was really as simple as that. Um, you know, so you can rest assured as, as soon as you follow those instructions of, of copying and pasting, it's, it's very straightforward and you hit save. And that's what everyone's gonna see when they get into the booth. One slight um, caveat here is there's some additional controls at the lower left-hand corner here. Uh, I'm gonna hit this gear wheel and I'm gonna set this to loop. Again, if you poked around with it for 30 seconds, you'd, you'd probably feel pretty comfortable because that's how long it you know, took me to, uh, to get comfortable as well. So it, it's really not too bad. So I set that to loop and then I hit the play button. And again, now anytime somebody comes into my booth, this is what they would be greeted with. So you can have anything there. Again, a YouTube video, you can have the Google Slides, Vimeo video, uh, Wistia, uh, what have you. So, you know, Ryan, one, yeah. as I'm looking through, I see a couple of quick questions that have come up. Oh, um, sure. One of them that came up is, you know, when people arrive at your booth, if you're not there, will the attendees just see this? Yes, that actually perfectly leads me to the last piece of this, because in this case, all I've done is I've set my booth up to have slides or a video. That's it. I haven't actually set this up to, you know, to physically be there. And so um, why don't we take a look at that now? And I'm going to follow the same steps here. Uh, as I did previously. So again, we're going back to this email that I got to set up my booth. I follow the link. I'm back setting up my booth. And in this case, instead of just putting the slides or just putting a video, I want people to actually see me and talk to me and, you know, and converse. And I, I expect that's probably what most people are going to want anyway. So I'm actually going to select this option here, which is session. Now, the reason I saved this for last is that uh, we can also set a fallback. And by that means, if you'd like to step away and you need to go use the restroom or you need to you know, grab a bite to eat or answer a phone call, if you'd like to step away, well, you can do that. But what's going to be there when you know, somebody walks into your booth? Is it just a black screen? Well, no. And the key is you're selecting from those same exact options, a YouTube video, a Vimeo video, Wistia or uh, Google Slides. And that is gonna be what is there when you are not. And so that's, again, in terms of why I saved session for last, that's why I did so. So I'm gonna go back to Google Slides. I'm gonna follow the exact same steps, publish to web, check, check, save, uh, copy. I'm gonna go back to hop in. I'm gonna paste that in. And what I'm gonna do up here under moderator, I think there's been a few questions about moderators. You do have to be registered for the event in order to select somebody as a moderator. Now, in this case, I am registered for this event twice. I'm gonna pick this one. And ultimately, if you start searching your name, not email, search your name. So let's say I wanted to make Joe Gilderson. There we go. Um, I don't know if Amanda's registered for, no, I think we're the only two that are registered for this demo, but anyone who's registered, you can select as a moderator for your booth. So again, important step, register first, then set up moderator. 
So I've set myself as the moderator. I've set the Google Slides as my fallback. I've set the content provider as a session to start. And that is how that people will see me. And we'll, we'll come back to some of this other stuff here in, in terms of further customization. There's, uh, you know, my website link. And, and I think specifically, we're going we're gonna to talk about that a little bit further towards the end. But uh, for right now, I'm, I'm good with this. I'm going to hit save. Okay. And now we are going to, uh, again, we'll, we'll, take, we'll talk a little bit about navigation in just a second. But very quickly, I'm just going to navigate to the event. This is a demo event, right? So the audience shows up, the vendors show up all through the same link. You're going to go down to the expo and you're going to look for your booth. And here it is. This is what I titled it, Google Slides Demo. I open this up and I am greeted by my fallback because I wasn't there. So this is my Google Slides. This is exactly what I just put in there. And if I want to start setting this to loop, I go back to this loop and I hit play. And there we go. Now, anybody who comes into my booth is going to see this. Now, let's say I want them to see me. Well, again, right up in here, and this is something we covered in the last session, toggle to turn on live sessions. I flip that button. It's going to ask me, hey, do you want to be seen and heard? I say, yes, I do. I select my microphone. I select my camera. And this one looks a little better. There we go. And I'm going to hit apply. And there we go. Now, anybody who comes into my booth is going to be greeted by me. You can see me, you can hear me, uh, we can talk, I can share my screen. Again, similar to Zoom controls, I hit that button down at the bottom here, I can share my screen. Now, Ryan, so, let's just yeah. stop there for one second because we've had a few questions come up and they're mm -hmm. all really tied to this portion, which again is why we kind of left this for the more important time. Um, the questions are, how many people can you have as moderators, as we're terming this, when you're setting up that booth like you just showed them, you put yourself as a moderator for the session, and then you actually added me as well, which means I should be able to pop into this session and be live with camera and sound. Well, and, and others? One, one clarification to that. So you don't need to be a moderator to be seen and heard. The audience can hop in, no pun intended. The audience can, can join your booth and pun they'll have intended. an option. I mean, I really think it was. <laughs> it, it was well made. Okay. Um, the uh, up at the top, they'll have a button to share their, their uh, audio and video as well. So um, it's, it's pretty intuitive. We, we find that most people are able to navigate that pretty well. So there'd be a button right up here. They're able to, you know, hey, Ryan, tell me about corporate AV. And I say, well, hey, it's good to see you, you know. And, and up at the top here, you'll see one out of 10. And that is because up to 10 people can be on screen communicating at any one time. And that is not to say that no one else can also watch. Just like, you know, we're in a webinar where Joe and I are talking and you're all in a watch only or a view only mode. It's sort of the same thing where if they want to be seen and heard, they can. They can, you know, come up and, and talk and or if they want to just, you know, sample, there's a good conversation going on. I don't really want to, you know, jump right in and, and cut them off. I just kind of want to hear what they're talking about. Well, they can do that too. And, and that is really by default. They're going to enter the booth and they're going to see whatever's going on. And they're not going to be seen and heard unless they want to be. And so that way you can kind of browse and, and take a look at what's going on in, in different people's booth without necessarily needing to actively engage in a conversation. Sometimes you're really just browsing. Um, but Joe, you, you are right that you would be able to, uh, you know, to hop right in and uh, to be on screen and, and seen and heard. Um, you know, and, and like I said previously, if, if, if for whatever reason I need to step away, I just turned this back off and there you go. And now we got slides back up. Well, you know, one of the questions that's come up is, you know, what if we have two or three people and we're all in different locations? I mean, this seems actually like the perfect environment for that, really. <laughs> and, and it certainly is. I mean, just like, you know, we're all in different environments right now on the Zoom side watching this webinar. It, it's sort of the same thing. And, and this is where um, you know, Amanda, you had mentioned a little while ago about what this booth looks like. Well, you are looking at it, right? I, I haven't put, you know, a, a virtual background. There's, there isn't a virtual background feature like there is in Zoom in Hopin. Uh, but that's not to say you can't get creative with, with what's behind you. Now, my creativity level was covering up the mess that's behind this divider. So that's where I stopped. But uh, you, you really like some people will use step and repeats. Some people will, you know, have a product display. Um, I mean, you can really get creative and set up your booth in a similar way 
that you would have in person. It's just a little bit more show and tell. It's it's a little bit less, um, you know, you, you can't necessarily hand anybody something, but you have things and, and it's all on camera. And so uh, I think that's a key distinction to make is that, hey, this is you, very similar to other, you know, uh, video conferencing platforms where, um, you know, you, you're just being seen and heard. It's just whatever the camera is capturing is your booth. And if there were two people, uh, we're going to show you that in just a second. If there were two people, then you'd see the two of us. If there were three people, then you'd see the three of us. And that would be your booth. And again, so if at any point you need to step away, I turn that off and now it's just content. And Ryan, I'm just going to chime in here for two sure. seconds, like just to give some folks some examples. So I'm taking a look at some of our uh, participants. So for example, Peter from New York Hospitality Group, you know, he might decide to host this from the bar area in Sam's of Gedney Way. So that's what that's going to look like. Um, Ed from Red Oak Transportation, you know, maybe he decides that he's going to host from one of his beautiful, luxurious limos. Um, you know, Liz from Clancy, you know, maybe she'll be cool and be hanging out in one of her big moving trucks or in her office with, you know, some of her great signs behind her. So just like you see the three of us now in three different locations, we are more or less in three different booths. Um, so what you make your background is whatever physical space you're going to exist in from one to five on October 29th. Absolutely. And uh, Joe, if you could keep an eye on the, the Q and A, it looks like a lot of questions have come in, but my screen share is making it tough to do both. Yeah, um, we have a, we have a couple, sure. a couple that we've addressed. And then I think there's a couple more. Uh, will the, you know, consider everybody that, they're, they're using Google Slides in this platform as opposed to PowerPoint specifically. When you go to actually create them, they're very similar. Uh, but one question is, will the PowerPoint slash Google Slide allow for audio to play through? That's a good question. I haven't actually tried that out. Um, I'm, I don't use Google Slides as much. I could certainly, um, you know, we could, we could spend some time with it and, and get you an answer. Um, in general, you know, and this is where the line between having a video and having, you know, a slideshow is a little bit blurred because if you'd taken those slides and, you know, recorded some audio over it and, and really, you know, put together more of a presentation, then that might work better in video format. But if it's just like a quick, you know, animation or, or a sound bite or, or something to that effect, um, we'll, we'll, we'll make a note and uh, we'll, we'll get that tested out. Um, just not totally certain at this point if, if audio comes through from Google, from Google slides, it certainly does from YouTube, Vimeo and, and Wish and the, the video platform sites. So, right. um, it, it, it would make sense that, that it would, but before I say for sure, we have to uh, just try that out. Another, uh, another quick question in, in, when we look at, when we look at you on screen in the webinar, mm -hmm. you have a logo over your shoulder and it's, mm -hmm. it looks perfect. When we look at you on screen due to your second camera on the Hopin platform or on the Expo platform in your booth, the logo's in reverse, it's flipped. And right. so one question has come in, will the image always be flipped? That's a, that's a great question. So uh, in this case, to put my logo here, I'm, I'm using a, a, a type of software. It's called Cam Twist. if anyone wants to try it out. Uh, this happens to be Mac only, but it's basically a piece of software that adds graphics over my, my webcam. And so if you go here and Joe, uh, getting to your point directly, I figured I'd start by clarifying what that is. Well, of course, that's a shameless plug because we're going to be doing a little session, as you'll see, during the expo, probably around 2.30ish, but we'll come to that later. There we go. Very good. So um, what you're looking at here, actually, you'll notice is that in this little thumbnail, I think you can kind of make it out is uh, is actually the logo correct. And that's going to, you know, uh, allude to my, my answer here is that it's reversed to you and it's not to the audience. So that's for starters. Uh, but again, in, in terms of the, the software, we'll, we'll demo that in um, you know, in a little session during the expo. Um, but to answer the question directly, yeah, it, it looks reversed to you. It's only because it's mirroring my body. So it, I look like I'm looking into a mirror right now. That tends to be a little bit more comfortable. So you're not, you know, I move left and my image moves right. So it's, it's just doing that just for me. It's sending to the audience, the user, the person on the other side, the correct orientation. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah, no, I think that that's uh, that's something that's going to come up for people. So that's a good thing. And uh, we've had a 
a participant, one, uh, one buzz potential has submitted oh, an answer to Google Slides and the audio. So I'm gonna post that into, right, right into the chat for everybody to see. This way we have that one covered for right now. And I, like anything else, you just gotta give things a try. Joe, I'm just going to chime in with Ryan. Um, we had a we had an attendee post a comment, but only to the panelists. Um, in terms of the logo being backwards right now, we're on Zoom as a platform right now. We're not in Hopin. Um, and also, too, you're hosting a webinar where you're sharing a screen um, through a video, so it's it's a little different than what you're going to see. Um, the day of. So we're talking different platforms, we're using different software. Um, so that's why in for Ryan's screen share right now, his webcam is reversed because he's basically showing you what he's seeing himself, Correct. not as if you were an attendee watching it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And I, and I know in, in that regard, it's, it's a little, you know, hard to wrap your head around because we're in one platform and looking at another platform, but Amanda, you're spot on. You were looking at exactly what I am looking at. So on the user side, they would be seeing the reverse of this. So just trust us on that. That is the, uh, that is the case. The logo would it's be the just like one. doing, Ryan, it's just like doing an Insta story or doing a, a video of yourself in a mirror. It's, it's right. going to be reverse when you post it, even though you filmed it in the other direction. <laughs> that, that is absolutely true. Um, all right. Let's see. I see a few other questions. Yeah, there's a few here. others. Like, can I use a virtual background? Not in this platform. So the answer is no. You can't use a virtual background in Hopin. And that was uh, to our previous point is you'll have to get a little creative with what you physically have around you, but that could be an advantage. You know, you, you could find that that uh, uh, works well to the actual booth. I mean, it, it's, you can set it up similarly to how you would have set it up, you know, in person. So it, no, you cannot use a virtual background, but anything you want to put in view of the camera is, you know, totally fine. Yeah, now I, I think the exceptions are when people have other software ahead of time. So it's kind of like you're going ahead of what the hop, you know, what right. the platform is going to see. So if someone did have a green screen and they added it through software and then they they put themselves out into their session or their booth, I think that's a little bit of a different scenario. But uh, again, we're just trying to look through the questions here and, and get Absolutely. as much of that covered. And and one other thing is keep in mind you can also share your screen just like we can in Zoom. You can also share your screen here. And, uh, and so if there are, I saw a question about PowerPoint slides, there's no direct PowerPoint integration. So um, you could do one of two things. You could share your screen uh, to the hop in audience. And then it would, again, similar to how I'm sharing my screen to you in Zoom right now, you can share your screen to your hop in audience. And if I had PowerPoint slides pulled up, I could share my PowerPoint slides that way. Alternatively, since Google Slides tend to work very similarly, you might find that it's easier to just build it uh, uh, inside of, uh, of Google Slides and, and bring it in that way. Um, so Ryan, yeah. really in theory, if uh, let's say you as an exhibitor cannot man your booth all day um, and you want a quote unquote PowerPoint presentation to play, you're gonna build it in Google, Google Slides and that's how it's going to exist. If you want to be live and show a PowerPoint, just like you would if you were using any other virtual platform, you have your pre PowerPoint presentation queued up, you share your screen with whomever you're talking to, and then yes, then you could see PowerPoint. Exactly. But uh, PowerPoint can't be automatically uploaded as the, back, uh, the backup um, if you can't be there live. You have to use Google Slides if you want it that way. Exactly. So again, just, just like how I, I did previously where I, I wanted to step away, I turned off my live session and now everyone is seeing my Google slides. Again, this can't be PowerPoint exactly. It can't actually be a PowerPoint, but it can be a Google slide. It can be a YouTube video, Vimeo, Wistia. Ryan and Joe, I'm just going to jump ahead. I see someone had uh, asked a question about publishing and promoting the schedule of events to attendees. So in regards to a schedule of events, it's really just an open flow from one to five. Um, there isn't necessarily, uh, you know, major time breakouts just yet. Um, Joe, I know we're going to talk about breakout sessions that are controlled by the Expo platform itself. 
we do have a couple that are signed for those specific times. And yes, on Monday, we will be announcing that schedule. Um, but if you want someone to come to your booth as an exhibitor, it is up to you to communicate to your clients, your friends, your family, hey, come check out my booth. I'll be live from one to five. I'll be live from one to two. You know, you'll be setting your own schedule then as an exhibitor of when you're live versus when maybe you have a video or a Google Slides showing. So that is up to you to promote. We, uh, as the Business Council and Corporate AV and the Expo, we will just put out that it is from one to five. And then on Monday, we will publish um, the, the formal breakout session schedule um, that, we've already, that we've already put together. You know, and that, that's really the same as, as it would be in person. I mean, to be honest. So, and then, you know, there's some things that, and we'll, we'll discuss them in just a minute. There's some things that we would say, you know, you're going to go at this the same way. It's just, you have to adjust to the, you know, being on the computer and virtual and people being in remote locations. But, um, but why don't we continue along here so we can make sure we get through the content and then we have time for more questions. Do we want to talk about entering the event, Ryan? Yeah, I, I guess that sounds kind of important. <laughs> so uh, there are multiple ways to enter the event, and that actually makes things easier, believe it or not. Um, you can get in through four, basically four different ways, which I'll explain right now. One is by email. You're going to get an email uh, both a day out and one hour out that is going to have the link to the event. So that's the easy way. Um, alternative to that, you, you can also, uh, when you registered, like I registered right here, you should have received an email that says, all right, you're registered. And so I now add that to calendar and I can add it directly to my Google calendar, which I did already, but here's my link again. So if you wanted to copy and paste that, hold on to it, put it in somewhere special, put it in your calendar. I mean, I think that's an, an easy way to go. So here you go, I, I added it to my calendar. Here's my link on the day of, I just go to my calendar, click the link and I'm in. So you'll be greeted by this, this front page. The event is live, enter the event, here I am. So that is um, number two. If for whatever reason you lose your link, you cannot remember where you wrote it down, your calendar was confusing, you didn't wanna do it that way and you're lost and don't know where to go, well, you can always go to hopin.2, that's hopin.to. I go to my account and here's the event that I have already registered for, enter event. And, uh, and, and so actually one of, one of the things that personally I like most about this is knowing that there are multiple ways to get where you wanna go. Uh, because there's nothing worse than being like, oh man, you know, I want to join this meeting. I don't know where the link is. He sent me it. There's a password. There's a whole, you know, slew of things that, um, you know, tend to cause confusion in that case, having multiple ways to get there actually kind of makes things easier in my mind, because the last way, if there's nothing else, if you forgot to hop in dot two, or, you know, you, you're left to your own devices and you have a friend or a colleague who's already in there, that person can simply copy and paste the URL and send it over via email, text, whatever it may be to send a message. Um, you know, and, and so that is the, the fourth way. So one is email. You are going to get an email a day out and an hour out with your link. Uh, number two is from your registration link, add it to your calendar or simply copy it um, right here with your confirmation email. Uh, number three is go directly to hop in dot to go to your account and anything you've registered for will show up right there and number four is somebody who's inside already can copy and paste the link and send it to you um so that part i i again i, I do think is is fairly uh, straightforward being that there are multiple ways to get there no i you know i mean we've used a number of different platforms this is significantly easier when you're trying to actually find how to enter some of them are very difficult unfortunately you know, so that's why we wanted to make sure we discussed this. Um, we're watching the Q and A. We're we're looking at the chat. We're trying to keep an eye on different things. I think some of the things that are coming up, um, we're probably going to answer in the next piece. So I think we're just going to kind of move forward a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, Ryan, why don't we get back to sharing the actual booth? Because I I want to kind of look at a couple of ways that we think people can maximize their efforts. Sure. 
you know, four hours is kind of a long time. So, so to, to do so, Joe, really quick, um, getting back to your booth, there are also multiple ways to do that so that you can always get where you want to go. One is that original email that they sent. I demoed that out just a little bit, uh, a little while ago. The other is if you get lost and you don't know where to go, you can go to hopin.to, right? Go to your account. If you're not logged in, just logged in up, up here on the right-hand side, your profile will show your vendor dashboard. And if you are the vendor that has been entered in for um, you know, this particular booth, then you can also access it there. But obviously the email is probably the, uh, the, the easiest way to go, but, but just bear in mind that you can also access your booth anytime to set up uh, via the Hopin portal and via your, your profile up here. Fantastic. You know, I think one of the things, and we were talking about this just a second ago, certain things are very similar to what you would normally do at the expo or really at, at any other trade show too. So one of the pieces that's listed right on your booth setup is what we're calling the offer. And Ryan, if you can just highlight where that is on the page for everybody. Okay, so right there, you can actually reference something and put in, you know, in our case, maybe we're say, look, we're gonna have, give you a free virtual event evaluation or maybe it's save 10% off your next visit. You know, whatever your applies to you and your organization is what you'd wanna put in there. But the idea is to try to generate interest, right? That's why we're all doing this. So once you put that in there, then you'll see a couple of buttons below that. And that's really how people are going to see you and how you're gonna show up. And then what happens if they do in what they call register interest. Okay, so once you're looking at those pieces, you'll see something right there. You're gonna be able to put, when they go onto your site, they see your event offer right away and they see a register interest button and they just click on that. It gives them a little heart. Those are the things that are gonna allow you to collect the, the database and collect emails and, and be able to track you know, how you can help people in the future. To the right of that, there's going to be you know, another option there one that will allow you to put in a link to your website, not just the page, so that if somebody wanted to go right to that offer or that interesting piece, they would be able to go right there. And it's just other ways for you to connect the dots so that people know how to find you and how to get in touch with you and how you can eventually try to help them. Uh, Ryan, is there anything else on the offer piece before we start moving forward? Um, no, not exactly. I can, I can potentially show you what it looks like uh, on the front end. So let's say I go to my booth. Frankly, I'm not sure what's going to happen since I'm the booth owner, but let's give it a shot. I go down to the expo. I visit my booth. You'll also notice up here in the top tab here. There we go. Register interest. So that is where it is right here. So you can see the offer that we put in 10%. Uh, uh, this is just something that we just happened to write in here. And if I click this button, my contact information that is tied to my Hopin account will be shared with the organization that I am visiting in this booth. And so again, a quick way for a, a, you know, a value add, a quick way to, uh, to offer something for having visited that booth. And so, you, you know, you can get creative with what that is. And, and the key is you tell them what it is, they click the button, they get the information, and then it's up to you and, and how you want to deliver that. Uh, it could be a coupon code or, or um, you know, adding to a list. That, that part's really up to you. But, but this is a way for you to capture those, um, you know, those interested parties. You know, there was a question, Ryan, that asked if there could be multiple offers. Um, well, you are free to add as much... Um, copy to this as this will hold. I haven't actually tried to. So maybe if I said 10% 10, uh, 10 this, um, and I don't know necessarily how to delineate it, but again, you, you can type in right here, whatever it is that may be. I don't think it, there's really no way to select different options. So if you say put a, um, like if you had a few different things that you might want to offer and they get to choose, maybe you just list what those options are. And then when they reach out, uh, when they register interest, 
you can reach out, your sales team or whoever it is can reach out and say, hey, thanks for joining us. Thanks for coming to our booth. Let us know which gift you want and we'll, we'll get that sent over. So to answer that question, you can't necessarily have different options to select, but you can put as much copy in there as you'd like and, and then handle it uh, once you have their contact information offline, so to speak. Well, and that actually plays into one other question. Um, if, they, if, if the attendee clicks on the offer, you know, does the booth get notified? Yes, not right away. Uh, this would be like post event, you'd get a list of people who registered interest, people who were, you know, wanting more information or people who wanted that offer. Oh, there we go. I can zoom in to make this a little bit easier. Very good. And, and again, everybody, you got to get onto your booth page. This will all make more sense once you're on there, you know, and just get a little bit familiar with it. And then, you know, offline, we're happy to, to answer or support any other questions. Why don't we just keep moving here right now? Um, you know, a couple of other ways you can maximize your efforts. I, I think setting appointments with people is probably a good way. Again, because you're dealing with four hours and you wanna be able to use your time most efficiently. Um, Ryan, why don't we kind of show people how to find others? And then, you know, how we can try to connect one-on-one because -on -one. that actually will address a few of the questions we've seen. People have said, how do we connect one-on-one -on -one with people? And, and I mean, that is a tremendous portion of this software. Absolutely. Now, I, I actually do have a video. I think we'll illustrate this part a little bit better. Um, Joe, let me know if you hear my voice. I don't know if I checked that sound button, but let's find out. Okay. So one really easy way. Yes. Great. Here we go. To connect with people who are also attending this virtual trade show is to go over here in the people tab. Now this will be available on the right hand side uh, really at all times while you're inside the event. And if I click here, you'll be able to see some others who are attending the event, just like I said. So let's say I wanted to connect with Joe. You'll see some uh, examples here, but what I'm gonna do is click this button, invite to video call. And so I just sent him an, event, uh, an invite. You'll see it pops up down here. Hi, Joe, I'm inviting you to a private meeting room. I click this link and there he is. Hi there. I don't think they can hear you right this second, Joe. <laughs> Anywho, um, you have, uh, if you look up in the upper right-hand side, you'll see that we actually have up to five people who can join in on this impromptu meeting. And to do so, oh, I just, I'm actually gonna pause the video really quick here. So this illustrates the point I was making earlier about your, your actual exhibit booths. In, uh, in that context, up to 10 people can be on screen. I highlighted this here because if you're connecting with someone, um, you know, you, maybe you set that appointment uh, or maybe you saw something that was really interesting and you wanted to just quickly talk about it with your team, this would be the way to do so. And in this case, you'd have up to five people who are able to participate um, you know, and be seen and heard. So slightly different than in your booth, but similar functionalities with a lower capacity. So I'm gonna continue on here. Notice I'm not sharing my audio and video. Let me go ahead and do that. There we go. Now you're seeing me. Okay, so if you copy and paste this link up at the top of the search bar and send it uh, via email, text, or messaging in the chat, um, you know, sending direct messages to one another. If you send this link and that person opens that link, they can easily join in on your impromptu meeting. And there we go. And so now if I double click on any of these people, I can make them larger. I can also go ahead and share my screen if I'd like. And if I do so, everyone will see my shared screen, just like it was a, another participant. If I double click, now that looks kind of funky, but you get the idea. And that is an impromptu meeting inside Hopin. So here's also a, a good example of one of the questions that came up earlier, which is, um, you know, what does it look like when there are multiple people on screen at the same time in my booth? It's going to look just like this. Again, you know, we talked about the impromptu meetings having a lower capacity, but this could be up to 10 windows uh, in your booth. 
So in your booth, again, you know, this could be say the three people on your team, all at separate locations, all with different things to, you know, talk about and show and tell and, um, you know, different people who are ready to, you know, jump in and have one-on-one -on -one conversations with people. Well, here, here they come. They're seeing all of you here. They, they click their video to, uh, they click the button to share screen. Um, I'm sorry, to, uh, to share uh, audio and video, which I'm going to skip ahead in this video to show where that is. There it is. Again, upper right corner. That's what everyone is going to see. Uh, both in their booth and when they jump into a meeting. There's a similar format here that, that you'll start to get familiar with. They share their, their audio and video, which puts them on screen just like I did there. And then again, if you, if you add another person, the other person comes on. If you added a fourth person, the fourth person comes on. Um, and so again, just to, to illustrate a little further what, uh, you know, what, what that booth might look like. And then the, the beauty of how this system works is let's say somebody came into your booth and, you know, you're having a really good conversation, but you don't want to chew up all this airtime where there's other people coming in. They want to talk. And, you know, so everyone's been in a, you know, a meeting where there's so many people and, you know, it's kind of hard to have sidebar conversations. Well, this video just illustrated how you can have that sidebar conversation. You, if somebody comes into your booth, you can say, hey, you know what? This is a great conversation. Why don't we, you know, why don't we take this to a sidebar and, uh, you know, and, and talk further? And so this video literally illustrates that. You find that person on the side, you send them an invite to the video call and click the link and boom, now you're in a separate meeting and now you're in a separate room and you can talk to that prospect or, or that client or, or whoever it may be and, and dig in a little deeper and then you leave and you go back to your booth. Very good. And then of course, one other way, just copy and paste in that URL and you wanna just send that out to anyone and this way they know how to find you. You know, they can find your booth directly. And the key is they just gotta be registered. We wanna get everybody registered because then it's just much easier to find everyone. They're gonna be literally on the navigation panel the entire time. That's the main page right there. And in the upper right-hand corner, it says people. The really interesting thing is there's an overall chat that will go out to the entire event. But then when you get to each individual booth, there's actually two options. You can send a chat out to the entire event or just to the people in the booth. But it's all on the right hand side. The navigation becomes the same almost every time. And I Joe, think. can I just clarify for everybody? Most people that are watching this webinar will have already registered, AKA purchased their booth through the business council. That's great. That's the first step. After that though, everybody and anybody that wants to come to the expo has to register via Hopin. It's not an automatic, um, you register to purchase the booth, it automatically you know, puts you into hop in. People that purchase their booth, you were all sent the email to set up the booth, but if you want anybody else on your team, just like you would if we did a physical event, you have to register them on hop in in order for them to gain access to the hop in platform. I just wanted to specify that because I know we're very, we're very free with using the word register these days. So I just wanted to make sure that people know, even if you purchase your booth through the expo, you, uh, through the business council website, you still have to register on hop in to gain access to the virtual trade show that day. Great. Very good. You know, I think from our side, Amanda, I think we've kind of hit all the, the key topics that we had planned on hitting. I'm just looking through the questions. I didn't know if anybody has any remaining questions. We're happy to uh, to answer a few. Joe and Ryan, I saw somebody had asked about uh, processing payments. So like if they're selling a product that day and they want to be able to physically make a sale, I do not believe Hopin supports any sort of credit card functionality that day, correct? You correct. Are, you are correct. Right. It does not support that that day. Okay. Um, so yeah, so if anybody is selling anything live at the trade show, you would just have to collect, um, you know, that person's contact information or however you would, you know, normally do an online sale, maybe direct them to your website to do whatever sort of purchasing they need to do. Um, but you can't actually physically click anything on the Hopin platform to then process a credit card. Right. Which is why in that case, you would link them to your website Correct. because then your website's already built to handle that. Um, and I think a couple of people, they just came in late in terms of number of people that can manage the booth. Um, so we're, we're recommending no more than four 
moderators at each booth. And the reason we're saying four is only 10 people can be on screen at the same time in the booth. So if you want to be able to entertain multiple clients at once, um, you know, we say four people representing the company, and then that gives you six slots for people to come and visit you. Um, you know, again, people can come in and out throughout the day. So if you don't want all four to be there all day, then you register eight, four people take the first two hours, four people take the last two hours. You know, that's the beauty of the virtual space. Just like if you were in person, you're doing shifts. Um, and then in the private meetings, again, as Ryan mentioned, it's a max of five. So again, if you want one representative to attend to four clients, that's kind of the ratio that you want to stick with as you go forward on that. Yeah, no, that, and that's, that's true. I mean, the idea is to make everything manageable. You know, with the four hours, that's why you have the option of putting up a video clip or putting up some slides so you can step away. And unfortunately, I think everybody has a lot to do in a short period of time right now. So it's a complicated world, but uh, this does give you the ability to do some of that. You know, and I know somebody gonna... asked okay. a question earlier about how long of a video. I mean, that's really up to the each individual organization and booth. Um, so I, I don't think I'd, I'd be... I wouldn't be going out to tell you exactly how long to put out there for yourself, but, but I, what makes sense? I think it's just a matter of what makes sense, you know? So what's going to get your message across? If you can do it in 90 seconds, great. If it takes a, you know, three minute video, great. You know, if you want to put up a full length feature film and have somebody settle into your booth and watch <laughs> the newest Top Gun movie, that is totally your call. I think then we got to mail them out popcorn. So you got to send stuff exactly. out ahead of time. Exactly. And the other thing, again, I just want to reiterate for people, because I know the terminology is a little different than how we've used it in past years, is there is the expo main floor. That is where all the booths will be listed. Once everyone's in, they will be arranged alphabetically, sponsors and event partners first, exhibitors um, alphabetically thereafter. So it's not like the in-person event where booths are assigned a placement and number so they can track. You'll literally come to the main page and just, you know, do that alphabet in your head and you'll be able to find the booth that you're looking for. Um, and then breakout sessions. So for the purpose of the expo, breakout sessions are going to be content driven, specific time slotted portions of the event. So as Joe mentioned, corporate AV is going to be doing a 2.30 PM breakout session on um, Zoom optimization. Vcast is going to be doing, I believe, a 1.30 breakout session um, on uh, you know, utilizing video um, you know, to promote your business. I believe New York Hospitality Group is going to do a four o'clock breakout session mixology demo. Um, so those are very specific. They're content driven. If anyone watching this is interested in one, it, was an it is an opportunity to add on to your uh, exhibitor booth. So just reach out to me and we could certainly talk about it if I have slots still available. The private impromptu meetings are more like your little side chats with individual clients. So again, just wanted to clarify the terminology. Breakout sessions are still gonna be a public event, but they're gonna be specific content driven, driven probably about 20 minutes. And then the impromptu private meetings are going to be when you want to have a one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one conversation or a one-on-three-person conversation versus talking to everyone in your booth at the same time. Excellent. And, uh, you know, since Ryan has this page up right there, that's over in the people section. That's when you register. So when you're registering yourself, think of it almost like you're LinkedIn. You know, it's like you're, that's your professional, you know, look, because that's what people would see. So if you have a headshot, if you have some very specific things you're trying to highlight for the expo, that's where you should put it. Put and, it right in the profile when you're logging in. And just a reminder, if you ever want to change any of that information, upper right-hand corner, you'll see a little menu here, edit profile. There we go. And I can add any information, my Twitter link, you wouldn't want that. Uh, <laughs> my LinkedIn profile, website, and you know whatever other information you'd like here. And I think, Joe, you and Ryan and I talked about it earlier, but in terms of tech support the, the day of, you know, nobody tried to reach out to Hopin. Hopin is just the virtual platform that we purchased um, to be able to host this event. We are going through Corporate AV. We are going to set up a kind of all day, and Joe, correct me if I'm wrong, sort of a Zoom meeting that you can pop into and say help, and they will help, and we will send that link separately. 
Um, but again, because Hopin and Zoom don't talk to one another, we do have to set them up separately. Yeah, I, I think it's just easier than there's one centralized place so people can come in. A lot of the questions are gonna be very much the same. Mm -hmm. And you know, maybe we just, we all, ex we expect all the questions really to be in the beginning when everybody's trying to get logged on and, and trying to get started up. I'm sure that everybody will be fine once they're, you know, they just get going. And the event will go live about five minutes to one o'clock, correct? That's yes. what the platform allows? Mm -hmm. Okay, so yes, yeah, so again, all of sort of your prep work in terms of, um, you know, uploading your images, uploading your links, uh, you know, registering all of your folks to be able to, you know, be moderators or just attend the event, that all has to be done in advance. And then in about five minutes uh, to one o'clock on the 29th, Hopin will become live for the Expo platform. And then everything that you have already uploaded will go live. And then if for some reason you are having an issue, you're gonna use that Zoom link to the all day tech support to kind of reach out to uh, the corporate AV team. They'll try to walk you through, check anything out. And then obviously you can go back into the, to the Hopin platform for the virtual expo. Okay. Great. And then I think okay. for everyone else attending, we are gonna post this on the Business Council's YouTube page. We will send to everyone there after. So of course, share it with any other folks on your team. Um, you know, reach out to us if you have any additional questions. Um, and then I think the big thing now is to promote that you're taking part in it. You know, if you wanna drive your clients and again, your friends and family to this, you have to let them know when you're gonna be there, what you're gonna be doing, um, post it on social. Um, I think Mike Dardano, I think you're still on here. There are posts on the Business Council's Facebook page pertaining to the Expo. Share those. They're already there for you. Or obviously create your own to promote um, your booth. But again, guys, this was so good. I am so excited for next week. That'd be fun. I'm looking I'm forward. I'm kind of geeking out a little. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, we appreciate, uh, appreciate the time, Amanda. Hopefully we can help everybody uh, really have a successful experience. Absolutely. And I think we answered pretty much all of the questions um, in both the chat and the Q&A. If we did not, um, and it was something very specific to your booth versus, you know, more of generic about the event, shoot me an email. If it's something I can answer, great. If it's not, then my, uh, my, two, my two favorite people over here will be able to help us out. And um, what I'm going to go ahead and do is just to make life easy for everyone right now, I'm just going to post my email in the chat function right now. So take that down um, if you have any questions, okay? All right, gentlemen, thank you so much for your time today. Appreciate you taking us through this. And again, this will be posted uh, probably in about a day or so, so you can share with everybody else. Sounds great, thank you. All right, thanks, Ryan, thanks, Joe. Thanks, everyone.